Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Uh, still the number one SQL Server consultancy outside of New Zealand, according to Beer Gut Magazine. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more T-SQL stuff today in this video. Uh, as usual, this is part of my T-SQL course, Learn T-SQL with Eric. Uh, the current pre-sale price is still $250. All 23 hours of the beginner content is up and available. Uh, and the price will go up to 500 bucks once the advanced stuff is done after the summer. So I would urge you to buy before things start to get cool uh, in, in, in this hemisphere because uh, the, the prices will will rise. All right. Anyway, let's talk about um, null handling stuff. Now, we're going to talk about actually two things, nulls and weird data types, right? Because there are, well, the, some not weird data types, weird things that happen with data types in SQL Server because there are some odd ones. So uh, is null and coalesce are two functions that you can use. They're presentation layer functions. Is one thing I want to make clear here. Anything that you type, and like you know, like like you know, stuff like this that turns pink is like I don't know. It's like a it's like a presentation presentation layer function. So is null and coalesce are there for you to make data look pretty when you give it back to people? These functions have no relational meaning. The optimizer can't see inside them, do anything fancy or fun with them. Uh, so you know, like you know, if you put these in the select list, okay, okay, fine, like uh, no problem. But where clauses, you know, stuff like that, cause some additional issues. We're going to talk about that in the next video uh, when we go over sargability a little bit. But uh, there are some important things to know about differences between is null and coalesce and the way that they handle uh, data types and implicit conversions. So I have uh, a, 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 a local variable declared here called z, which is a car1, and it is currently null. So when we run is null or coalesce, we're going to say, we're, we're, these functions are going to say, hey, this thing is null. Uh, we need to replace it with this value over here. But something kind of funny happens when we do that. And the funny thing is that is null only returns the letter E and coalesce returns the full thing. So uh, this will happen with dates too. Right, so uh, or rather, date time values or temporal values, if you prefer it. Uh, so, if if we look at this example, uh, we're declaring now uh, a, a local variable variable called d, which has a data type of date, and then we have this sys date time function, which is a date time two. Uh, what is the full? Yeah, it's a date time two seven. Right. And, oh, my head's in the way. Date time two seven. So this thing has a much much like you know much more precise. Uh, accounting of, of like hours and seconds and milliseconds and stuff than uh, a, a date would, which is only like year, month, day, of course. So if we do like something similar here, right, and we declare D as a date and make it null, this is what happens to the results, right? So when we, you, when we just say select sys date time to see what the actual result is, we get back this whole thing. When we, when we say is null at D and then re like with with the sys date time as the fallback, we only get a date from it, right? So is null like put pins a lot on the first input as far as data typing goes. Coalesce doesn't. Coalesce uses the the the, the biggest data type of the whole thing. So the data type actually returns the same value as date time as sys as the sys date time function call over here, right? These two things are identical, but is null only returns the date portion of it. So there can be some weird silent bugs and errors depending on how you uh, structure your like depending on if you use is null or coalesce, and then how you structure your queries that use is null and coalesce. Um, there are also some things with like implicit conversion. Uh, that you have to be careful with. So is null will actually handle this, but coalesce will throw an error on this, right? So if we run this thing and we say like if this string is null, which it isn't, replace it with a one. SQL Server is like no problem. So how you doing? Looking nice today. But if we try to run that with coalesce, SQL Server will say no, conversion failed when converting the varchar value sup to data type int. So coalesce. Not all roses, not all roses. Despite being a lovely, lovely name, 
uh, lovely word there. All sorts of beauty, beautiful things, sounds come out of your mouth when you say it. Um, except this one, one guy I know who says it coalesce. Uh, I don't know why. Um, actually, I heard one, one person can, well, always called it coalesce. And I was like, that's interesting. It was like an American guy, though. It wasn't like, like a, a, a like an ac like an accentual thing. It was just, it was just like you don't you don't really know how to say that, do you? Anyway, uh, let's talk a, a, a little bit about null trickery, right? Uh, so let's the, we're going to drop this table if it exists, and now we're going to create a table with these tool tips. Will get out of my way, called null tricks, and you'll notice that this column reputation uh, is an integer. It's nullable, right? But it, we have a default of zero, and we are checking to see if reputation is greater than zero, right? Which is a weird combination to begin with, right? Because like, how can you default to zero and have a check constraint of greater than zero on there? But it's just to really show you this, that we can insert a row in there with a, with a null literal mark, right? We can, we can say explicit null goes in there, and now what we get in this table with a check constraint <laughs> and a default value of zero is, is a null. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't want this, then you really do have to make columns not nullable because there's no, nothing else in the world will save you if someone actually explicitly inserts a null in there. There are some other weird things that can go on with like null checking too. And we're, we're gonna, I, just, I need to show you a couple other things first though. So the, 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 this, is, this is the first thing, right? If we have this case expression, and if we say where one is equal to A, then true, else false. This will, of course, throw an error because SQL Server cannot compare the letter A to the number one, right? We can't, we can't do that. But what if we do this? What if we compare an empty string to the number zero? All of a sudden, SQL Server is like, oh, oh yeah, by the way, uh, uh, that's fine, right? Okay, well, uh, empty string equals zero. Okay, SQL Server. Uh, no, I'm worried about stuff. <laughs> Uh, but this can cause like some weird buggy stuff. So for example, if I select a count of all the users in the users table, we will get back 2465713. Now the funny thing about the users table is, is that it's got a column in it called age. But the age column is all nulls because whoever at Stack Overflow decided it wasn't worth holding this PII data in their users table, so they were like, no more ages. So what happens if we run uh, this query, and we replace all those nulls with an empty string, and we say, hey, I just want where all this is equal to zero, SQL Server will count all the rows in the table and give us 2465713. So that's a, that's a little weird too, right? That's, that's, that's kind of making it scary. But the same thing can happen with dates, right? Or date times or temporal stuff, right? So if we look at these, uh, what we're going to say is uh, where close date is greater than or equal to uh, 1900.0101. And then we're going to say where coalesce close date uh, zero is greater than or equal to 1900.0101. And then where coalesce close date empty string is greater than or equal to 1900.0101. And if we run all of these queries, you might be somewhat shocked to find that this one actually does the right thing, right? Because we did, we did not do any null, null handling idiocy on this column to say like, you know, coalesce or whatever. Uh, this actually returns the number of close dates that are after 1900.0101. The other two queries return all of the rows in the table. In the post table, there are 17 million rows. Uh, this returns, oops, that's a little off there. This returns all of them, right? So uh, we, don't, we, we don't get back uh, uh, what, is, what is, I think, uh, correct data there, there, right? That's that's not a good sign. But you might see shorthand like this in a lot of like date queries. Like when people do date math with date diff, date add, and all the other stuff, uh, you might see someone uh, use zero as a shorthand for 1900.0101, right? So if we select this, we will get back 45830, and because there have been 45,000 830 days between today, between 1900.0101 and today. And the same thing will happen if you put an empty string in there, SQL Server will say, no problem. So not only will SQL Server convert an empty string to zero, but it will convert zero to 1900.0101, and it'll, it'll convert 
I guess technically an empty string to zero to 1900-0101 in the context of a date or date time or something. So there are some very strange things that you need to be aware of when you start working with nulls and you start working with, uh, you know, things where you think you can take clever shortcuts, but uh, SQL Server will, uh, in its weakly typed way, get the better of you. Anyway, uh, I, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I mean, you're probably running scared to go look at all your code now. Uh, I hope you learned something. Um, I hope you learned something valuable here today. Uh, and I will see you over in the next video where we will talk about a little bit about sargability and how uh, these presentation layer functions like coalesh, coaleshi and, and isnull and whatnot can get in the way of query performance. So thank you for watching.